What do you get when you put two teachers, half a dozen parents, a shed, a boat builder, and a troop of children, and a famous boat designer, when you put them together? Ladies and gentlemen, I present you Arthur Fleda. Yes, we built a boat. Not just one, but three of them. You may ask yourself, why would a relatively small independent school in northwest London be interested in sailing, let alone building their own boats? Let me take you on a little journey with King Alfred School Boats. The story begins in Cornwall at a local pub, where two teachers met Nigel Lyons, a well-known classic boat designer. Having already secured financial backing from a number of incl uh, nautically inclined parents, they were after an exploration type of vessel, propelled by sails and oars. Nigel sketched a gaff-rigged, three-masted cutter, large enough to accommodate up to ten people and quite nimble when sailed by only a few. As this was a unique design, the boat class was named King Alfred. The teacher's requirements included top safety, good sailing ability, and an abundance of ropes and sails and jobs for many idle hands. A boat shed was erected on school grounds and students, teachers and parents began with the construction of their first boat. Between the years 2000 and 2003, a flotilla of three boats was put together. A connection between the past and the present was established. Um, the boats were named in honour of King Alfred's daughters, Athel Fleda, Athel Swiver, and Athel Giver. Um, I might digress a bit, but it is worth remembering that when the school was established in 1989, 19, 1898, <laughs> the numbers don't go well with me, um, it was named after King Alfred. Fittingly to the school's progressive ethos, his character was chosen as he insisted on his daughter's education, which was unheard of in his time. Quite, um, um, quite a topic in a history lesson in an outdoor classroom, wouldn't you agree? I still remember how the head of physical education at school got quite vociferous in his discontent, discontent raging against such a decadent idea to spend so much money on an exclusive pursuit for a um, few skillful adventurers seemed completely unjustified to him. Right now, that same person is standing right here in front of you, <laughs> filled with highest esteem and astonishment as to what these boats offer. Thanks to the three King Alfred daughters, I've completely changed my tack, learned how to sail, instruct and lead combining safety with peril. <laughs> How could I not be enchanted by these beautiful creatures? I've got to learn their soul. I've got to know their soul. They could be lazy, capricious, aggressive, obedient, stubborn, happy, curious. Aboard these emotional classrooms, I've learned my best lessons. And the cost? You'll spend more cash building a single heart-standing classroom. But, um, the boat class and in-house sailing instructors got certified and the sisters started clocking, started clocking in miles. By water and by road, they've trailed through England, <coughs> Scotland, Wales, and then Belgium, Germany, France, Austria, Slovenia, Italy, Croatia. This voyage brings us to the present, two, years into, uh, two decades into their existence. On a regular basis, we sail our boats on Welsh Harp, which is a local um, water reservoir. Then we take them to Norfolk Broads and the Wash. A four-day rowing trip on River Thames between Abingdon and Reading is an annual event for 14-year-olds. Grasping the physics of rowing and of operating river locks. Familiarising with um, geography, history and flora and fauna of local places and people. Discussing um, nutrition for exercise. Introducing three men in a boat as 
um, a must read at evening barbecues. The list of educational, different educational disciplines um, is limitless. Our boats really are the best classrooms in, in the world, outdoor classrooms in the world. The learning is endless. It encompasses all subjects. It doesn't rely on high tech. It connects students, teachers and parents in different roles. It offers a journey into the zone. It, it travels um, between ages and um, languages and cultures. The floating sisters facilitate the teacher's mantra of what I hear, I forget. What I see, I might remember. But what I do, I know. Leaders at the helm soon, ch uh, soon face challenges from their crews, be, be it at sailing or rowing. As a team, our sailors work, work out an ongoing risk assessment. They realize the physical limits, endeavor synchronization, rein in the forces involved, and create poetry in motion. Often, they all sing, splash, play pirate games, laugh, and talk a lot. Instead of feeling trapped in a confined space, they explore open horizons, they jump in the water, and even fall asleep on the deck, exhausted after a day's adventures. The family sailing and summer holidays is the real highlight of our season. Titled Beaches, Boats and Barbecues, they offer the most varied sailing and fun beyond water activities in Croatia and south of France. When I see a child casually teaching sailing skills to his parents or teachers, my heart skips a beat, for this is the pinnacle of my teaching career. Our regulars include six formers who soon earn the stripes to venture on their own without a certified skipper on board. During daytime, they gather wood for barbecues, they entertain young sailors, organize a diving competition, excitingly mingle with locals. And the locals, their query starts with what, how, who, why? Our ambassadors, members of the sailing community, happily provide answers. Okay, I do admit, sailing boats are designed to travel from A to B in the fastest possible manner, and we purposefully take diversions of route. Are there any tough challenges? Is it dangerous? How about Sail Caledonia, where Year 10 students took part in a seven-day regatta competing against experienced adult crews? Sailing from the west to the east coast of Scotland through Loch Ness and Loch Lochy and Loch Oi <laughs> really puts your skills to the test. The lochs are narrow and they whip up massive waves. I still shiver from the thought of capsized boats. You literally have 10 minutes to get out of the water before fatal hypothermia sets in. Another teacher's mantra is signed off. The closer to the edge, the better the learning. <laughs> to add to precarious escapades, we enter the Great River Rowing Race each year. The race is 22 miles long, starting in Greenwich and ending in Twickenham. We cross our bows with 350 other boats, riding high tide on the River Thames through central London, and the river throws its worst tantrums at you by sending fast-moving passenger boats creating a wash and choppy water, and by shifting heavy anchored ob obstacles on the way. My heart is, my, is in my stomach at the finishing line. Will all three boats arrive safely? When they do, I whisper the words of John Peasley, who was my original skipper and who got me into boating. We got away with it again. <laughs> um, the journey doesn't end here. The future is red, blue, and green. That's what our kids call our boats. Next year, we plan to offer each subject a day on a boat. Our floating classrooms will host a class with a subject teacher on board, tackling a topic of their own choice. Every subject, you might ask? How about art or drama? As an example, I'll mention 
Zrinsky Art Festival in Croatia, where our boats themselves, work of art, were very popular exhibits during the day and acted as a main prop later in the evening, supporting a, a modern dance performance telling a story about seas, love and travelling. Why am I talking about our sailing boats? My hope is that other educational establishments will recognise the benefit of such enterprise and embrace the idea of sailing and perhaps even building their own boats. This can be a bonding tool between different subjects and separate parties that make up the fabric of every school. Sailing itself is easy to grasp. The core skills are pretty straightforward and the learning never stops. The exhilaration of sailing is equally shared between your best athlete and an uncoordinated student. I have never seen a child stepping off our boat without a broad smile on their face. What connects each one of us here and beyond in the outside world is that one way or another, we're all children and we would laugh to achieve that broad smile on our faces. So, in the words of Cherry Fee, an, an avid sailor and windsurfer, don't just sit there, sail something. <laughs>